Welcome back and we're moving on with my print that I left last time at this stage where I have just put a little layer of yellow onto the grey. So this to remind you is sort of uh, a dusk eveningy print that I'm working on here and the next layer on from this one is to put, I'll show you one because I've already worked out how to do it, um, it's that it's that kind of tricky transition in skies between the yellow where the sun is up to the blue that's still remaining in the sky. Um, I was looking at the sky outside the studio last night, which was obligingly doing this. And there is this very interesting sort of change from orangey reds to blue without any greens. So I've been fiddling around this morning working out how to do that. So I'll show you how I've managed this particular layer of inking. So my block here I've cut away for the yellow and I've deliberately mimicked sort of uh, brush and scratch drawn marks there. So let me just hang that one up and I'll go through the stages. So the inks that I've got, um, I've got one, two, three, four colours mixed to do this. So I'm going to be doing what I do quite a lot, which is to do multiple inkings without a cutting in between. And that is very much as I would work in Japanese woodblock. So I'm just going to hang this paper up out of the way. And the first layer I'm going to do is a bit of white at the top of the sky, um, because I want the sky to go from using that grey paper to help with the colour at the bottom of the sky where it's yellows and oranges up to a slightly more opaque pale colour at the top of the sky. So I'm going to lay down a little bit of white here. I'm just going to kick the table. We've got these great trestle table legs but they are a bit uh, wobbly at times. So. Now this is a really thin layer of white ink. It's not going to put a thick opaque layer on, it's just going to knock the grey back a little bit. So I'm going to put that at the top of the rhino. And another thing before I get inking I just wanted to show you is the edges of this print like all the rest of the set they're brush marks and there needs to be those need to be visible so if I were using if I were doing an ordinary print I would maybe have the ink disappear into nothing but here I do want the viewer to be able to see the brush marks all the way around the print so I couldn't just like have a blue sky and then a gap and then a yellow uh, red sky so I've had to deal with this area so the white helps with that as well, um, so that the edges of the print show. So I'm just going to take an impression of that white. And again, I'm going back to my cards and I'm going to pack the press out. Again, with a nice firm pressure because it's a large area that I'm printing. So you can probably see there that it's not a, a vast amount of difference having that little bit of white up there. It's just a start. And now I'm going to go over to using the orange and reds. And again, very thin, thin layers. You can see you know, there's virtually nothing on my roller there. I'd rather do lots of inkings and get it right than put too much on at once. And I'm pushing the ink now down into the landscape as well so that it's going all over the landscape so that when I print the landscape in its greys, there's an underlying warmth there as though the, the light is sort of shining down on a snowy landscape. 
So you can see it's starting to build there. I'm going to put a little bit more on there now. So I'm making use of that grey paper um, shining through the paint like I would with white with the white paper. It's it's good for an evening light because it, it dulls things down a little bit. That's better. Now I'm getting a build up. And also the yellow from the underlayer is shining through the, um, the oranges that I'm putting down. And that's nice too because it gives me yet another colour there. So I get a bit more sort of bang for my buck. And I think I want a bit of red as well. So I've, over here I've got um, a small roller with a little bit of red on and you're probably thinking that these are very painterly prints and won't they all be different they will fractionally probably not as much as you think um but i'm not that bothered about it my prints tend to be a little bit variable like that but i'm i'm okay with that and people who buy them seem to be okay with that so <laughs> that's fine so it's a question of adjustments um, for each print. Yeah, that's nice. So I've got this sort of like red build up there. Now there are going to be quite a lot of clouds on top of this. So this is the under layer that I'm working with here. So quite a lot of this will be hidden and now I'm coming on to the blue of the sky and again you can see it's a thin layer bleeding down into nothing on the roller and I'm just going to start putting that in at the top just need a little bit more blue on there so I'm just going to put a little bit more of this blue thing on. So I'm going to put another layer of blue on because I, I need it to show a bit better. I, there's no point having the blue there if you can't see it so I'm just going to gently Go over, I've just got the hair on it there. Let's just get rid of that. And you'll notice that I'm taking quite a bit of time to work the ink. When it's very transparent like this, you want the ink to be really smoothly spread out. So I usually take quite a long time with working the roller. Don't rush it, I think is what I'm trying to say. So here we go, let's have a look and see. And there you go. It's been a quite a complicated inking to get to this point, but it does give you that kind of correct atmospherics where the sky is changing 
and then it still has that kind of amazing blue at the top of it so um, worth the trouble I think. So thank you for watching this don't forget it really helps if you could like this episode if you like it and subscribe if you want to see more and also if you sign up for alerts you'll find out when the next film's coming. Thanks a lot and I hope you'll join me again.